Can you hear me? I'm Nomi Harris, and I'm pleased to welcome you to BOSS, whether you're here in the room with me or participating online. Uh, if this is your very first BOSS, raise your hand. I want to give a special warm welcome to those of you who are Thanks. Um, BOSS was launched in 2000 and has been held annually ever since. So this is the 23rd annual BOSS. And our parent organization is the Open Bioinformatics Foundation. And Chris Fields is going to tell you about that as soon as I'm done. I'm also going to tell you a little bit about CoFest, which follows BOSC. Um, we started out with the OS standing for open source, but we've extended to cover open science, open data, and uh, all sorts of things. So last year, we uh, had BOSC 2021 online. This is a screenshot from our closing online party from that. And this year is the first hybrid event, but I think it probably won't be the last. This is kind of the way of the future. So uh, thank you for being here during this um, transitional year. Uh, I want to thank the many people who BOSC uh, wouldn't be possible without, including ISMB and particularly Stephen Leard, who has been such a help with getting all the technical uh, stuff going our organizing committee and review committee, who I'll introduce in a minute, our sponsors and presenters and participants, we couldn't do it without all of you. So the organizing committee, I've chaired uh, BOSC for a number of years now. Um, Kirsten Hogan has also been on the committee for quite a while. He's unfortunately not here in person. Hervé Ménager has been involved in BOSC for many years. This is his first year on the organizing committee. Um, Monica Munoz Torres, has been on the organizing committee several years. She's here in the room, and I'm happy to welcome you warmly in Spanish for English. Deepak Pumi uh, was not able to attend. Uh, Nicole Vasilevsky is right here. And last, but definitely not least, Jason Williams, who you'll be seeing more of very shortly. I also want to mention our guest session chairs, Chris Fields and Taz Lee. The review committee reviewed all the abstracts and gave lots of constructive feedback. We also share our review process uh, openly on GitHub. And I want to give a big thanks to our sponsors who helped to underwrite some of our costs of running this meeting. We have Platinum sponsors, AWS and Chad Zuckerberg Initiative, Gold sponsors, uh, new this year, the NIH Office of Data Science Strategy and the Broad Institute and Silver Sponsors are BIDOS and Data Science. Um, you'll hear more uh, from our sponsors in, in, uh, after me and Chris. Uh, our sponsorships help us support some of our diversity and inclusion efforts, such as granting free registration to some people who otherwise would not be able to attend a meeting. This year we gave 15 presenters for your registration. 14 of these are from groups that are underrepresented in our field. And as another example of what our sponsorships enable, in 2021, we had, as far as we know, the first keynote talk at ISMB in a language other than English. It was delivered in French by a speaker from Cameroon, and we had professional subtitles of it. Um, as an example of who's been supported by these sponsorships, we have uh, David, who is a PhD student in South Africa. He got an event scholarship to attend uh, ISMB online and present his work. And he was such an enthusiastic participant that he became part of the review committee this year. Um, I won't read all of his quotes, but there's a blog post by him um, talking about uh, how much he got out of Boston 2021. Um, I'm going to just very briefly go through our sessions to, to give you the, the lay of the land for our meeting. Uh, right after this, we'll have our first keynote, Jason Williams, which is a joint keynote with the Education COSI. Um, we have another keynote later uh, tomorrow by Melissa Handel, which is joint with the Bioontologies COSI. We also wrap up tomorrow with a panel about building and sustaining inclusive open science communities. I'm pretty excited for this, so don't miss that. Uh, I think it may not appear in the Juno schedule, but it's on our website. So we are now in this first session. And then we have Jason. We have immediately after that our first session on inclusion and open science. 
then we have two hours where there's lunch, and this is the only poster session. So please make time to go downstairs and look at the posters. And if you want to organize an informal uh, BOF during that time, I'll just talk more about those in a minute. Uh, after lunch, we have a session on analysis, tools, and approaches. That starts at 2.30, so be sure you're back for that. Then we have sessions 3A and 3B in the afternoon, followed by uh, there's an optional pay your own way boss center. This is already full, but um, there's a wait list. Um, and look in our Slack if you don't know where to find that. So, no. so birds of a feather are self-organized discussion groups around a topic of interest. There's official ISMB birds of a feather this evening at 6.15 listed on the ISMB program. There's one by our sponsor, AWS, about cloud computing and bioinformatics. Um, but we also encourage you, if you um, want to just chat with people to organize your own birds of a feather during the lunch and poster time, feel free to use this room, grab a corner, and uh, this can be a really productive part of the conference. So day two starts with ISMB talk. Then we have our popular session on workflow management systems. And then after lunch tomorrow, our joint session with bioontologies, including Lisa's keynotes and some talks chosen from abstracts submitted to both of the, the COSIs. And then finally, we have our panel tomorrow at uh, 3.45, followed by very brief closing remarks. So I mentioned the CoFest, uh, it's short for Collaboration Fest. And this is a free collaborative work event, but it's not just coding, but other things that support it, like testing and documenting. And this started in 2010. It's held usually after BOSC. This year, it will be July 15th and 16th. It will be a hybrid event. Those who are staying here will be able to meet in the Madison Public Library, uh, which is letting us use a room. Uh, and other people will be participating online. And you can find more about this on our website. At the bottom of each page on our website, there are ways to stay in touch with us. There's a link for joining our Slack workspace. You can find our past boss talks and you can follow us on Twitter. And remember to use the hashtag BOSC2022, not just BOSC22, because we number from zero and this is the 23rd end of BOSC. So that's all I have for now. And uh, I hope that you enjoy BOSC. And I'm going to hand this over next to Chris Fields, who is going to talk about the Open Bioinformatics Foundation. All right, so I'm going to give uh, the updates for the OBF for 2022. Um, I'm going to fly through a bunch of slides because I just got a lot going on. Uh, so what is the OBF? We are invested in having people who are members who are interested in open source, open science, bioinformatics. So anything that's related to biology, this could be everything from developing software tools to developing standards. Uh, we have a link at the bottom here for joining OBF. Got a great board. Um, we actually are talking about actually adding another member of the board. We're going to have elections likely after BOSS sometime later in the year. We'll announce these on our membership list. If you are interested in joining the board, let us know. Um, we are actively really, really wanting people to have a play a bigger leadership role in, in, in helping us out. What do we do? So the big ones are the self-managing projects. These are the bio projects that everyone's well aware of. So the BioPerl, BioPython, BioJava, and so forth. But we do have an active um, affiliated project plan in place. So we have this ability for projects to become affiliates for OBF. If you're interested in actually becoming a project, we have a policy now that you can follow. We also have a newsletter. We do need an editor. Um, so Bastion has been taking this on for the last year, I believe, and we are actively wanting uh, somebody to take over this role in a, a, a bigger capacity. So we try to issue these out a couple of times a year. 
If um, you're interested, you can jump right in. We are trying to get something out after BOSS 2022. Um, user submissions are greatly welcome, um, and we have these actually maintained on GitHub. So Nomi's actually talked about BOSC and COFES, and I'll have to go into a lot of details on those. Um, and Nomi's did a tremendous amount of work on getting BOSC up and running. Um, this has been going since 2020, uh, 2000, and this is the 23rd. For COFES, um, she also mentioned that we will have a hybrid uh, session down here at the bottom. Online in person after uh, 2022, I think. Is that correct? Is it at Madison Public Library? Right? Yeah. Okay. So if you're interested in COFES, they? and I think uh, Thomas is online. Is that correct? So they will be on the Slack channels if you want to participate. For the Google Summer of Code, um, this has been what, year 12 that we've uh, participated in the Summer of Code? So we're an umbrella project for open source bioinformatics, not just the bio projects. Um, this is actually much broader now, as you'll see in a second. So we have two admins, Melissa Black and Yo. Um, Yo actually headed this up, I believe, last year. Um, the, the mentors have also played a tremendous role. I've actually been a mentor for OBF and for the Summer Code in the past, and it's a great opportunity to get involved. Um, we have seven uh, projects this year. Um, out of these projects, I can point out that none of these are the bio projects. These are actually all independent open source projects that we support. We have adapted a, adopted a code of conduct. So we wanted to improve diversity and inclusion in bioinformatics, and now we have an OBF-wide code of conduct that has officially been approved by the membership. So this is now on, on GitHub in our official documentation. Um, BioPerl, BioPython, and a number of the other projects have either adopted these or are in the process of adopting these. These cover um, any OBF specific events. Um, ISB is one exception. We are actually into the ISCB code of conduct, um, but for any OBS specific events, including COFAS, this is what we use. So now we have a central point for reporting and handling. So we have the former travel, now event fellowship that's aimed at increasing uh, diverse participation in events, promoting open source bioinformatics software development. So this was started in 2016 as the official travel fellowship, so you can attend events, changed during COVID to a general event fellowship, so you can attend online events. Uh, we've given over 35 awards since this has been uh, initiated. We have a number of deadlines. We have a link here at the bottom if you're interested. Um, each of these covers up to $1,000, uh, covers travel expenses and everything, including childcare. And this is a, a finally one of the things that I think is going to be great is this uh, supporting grassroots events. So we officially, or as I said, approved this in principle. We're launching a community support sponsorship scheme. So we're going to donate a thousand dollars to grassroots organizations who want to actually set up uh, their own their own events. So this could be workshops, this could be um, their own conferences, and so forth. So we will sponsor those events for up to a thousand dollars. It's a lump sum. There's no um, expenses, claims, or anything that we have to worry about in those cases, which is kind of great for us. Um, but I think that this will actually take off and be really popular. So this is a, where, what else should we do? I think that the question for us is that we're all volunteers. Um, everyone that's on the board does this in a purely volunteer basis. So there are lots of things that we could help out with, opinion pieces on blogs, letters, and so forth. But it really, this comes down to input from the community. So if you want to help us get something out there, uh, please contact us. We will we'll greatly appreciate it. And in conclusion, um, Nomi had links. Here's some example links for the website. We've been active, pretty active on Slack. Actually, I'd say more and more active than even the email list. Um, and then I want to acknowledge a whole list of people, the OBF members, the board members, SBI, um, some of our code team who's done a fantastic job. And that's it. That's it. If anybody has any questions afterwards. We're going to have now some uh, brief videos from some of our platinum and gold sponsors. And after that, we will have Jason's. Whether you're advancing scientific discoveries for effective therapeutics, building 
one solution that improved the patient journey. We're leveraging genomics to guide precision medicine. It all comes down to care. AWS provides the technology needed to improve healthcare delivery today and usher in a connected, digitally enhanced future of health. When a patient's journey starts with a telemedicine appointment, AWS is the trusted technology partner powering your conversation. From keeping protected health information private to unlocking the potential of your data, AWS boosts your innovation through a comprehensive set of solutions powered by the most mature and reliable cloud platform. Predicting a patient's health event before it occurs is made possible by AWS through high-performance computing and the industry's most comprehensive machine learning platform. And the personalized elements of your patient engagement strategy leverage the same technologies that helped Amazon.com transform e-commerce. On the journey of care, AWS will be there to help you make it happen. Over the past decade, the cost of data generation has plummeted. Biomedical data sets are growing ever larger and multifaceted. Genomics and other technologies are combined with health data to help us deliver on the promises of precision medicine. Yet, as data sets reach petabyte scale, data transfer and mobile storage become unacceptably slow and expensive rendering the traditional model of data sharing unsustainable. This is why data generators and biodata initiatives are trying to the cloud to make these massive data sets available to researchers in a federated data ecosystem. Terra is an open source platform created by the Berg Institute, Microsoft, and Verity to empower researchers to take advantage of that cloud ecosystem without having to deal with the underlying through Terra, you can explore a wealth of open and access controlled data sets hosted on the cloud. You'll be able to select data of interest and import it into your Terra workspace with just a few clicks. In your workspace, you can combine the imported data with other data from the library or with your own data and apply cross data set analyses to generate novel insights. Terra offers multiple options for analyzing your data using the full power of the cloud through interfaces that are tailored for biomedical researchers. You can launch massively scalable workflows from a simple configuration form and monitor progress visually as the system executes the work on virtual machines in the cloud. To work with your data in real time, spin up an interactive cloud environment in a simple minute and use applications like Jupyter Notebook and RStudio to run code and visualize results. You can easily share your work with your team and your external collaborator at any stage of your project, securely and with fine grained control on who can view, edit, or run analyses in your workspace. At the center of the biomedical data ecosystem, Terra is a hub that brings together data generators, tool developers, and biomedical to eliminate obstacles and accelerate scientific discovery. Let us help you focus on your science. Sign up today at app.terra.io. The United Talks of Data Science Strategy is a proud sponsor of the 2022 Bioinformatics Open Source Conference. The United Strategic Plan for Data Science prioritizes the modernization and integration of the biomedical data ecosystem through scientific, technical, and operational collaboration, ensuring a foundation of accessibility, transparency, and fairness. Our office is committed to supporting and promoting biomedical research advancements through the use of open source research software and promoting programs and software reviews and sustainability. To that end, our programs support development of data management, analytics, and tools necessary to ensure research data is shareable, reusable, and sustainable, and develop best practices for sharing research software. More information on the implementation of the NIH data management and sharing policy 
and the NIH Future Plans Data Science, please visit datascience.nih.gov or follow us on Twitter at NIH Data Science. Thank you and enjoy the conference.